I was driving on a big road because of my job, heading to the next place I'd be staying at. It wasn't a fancy place to stay, just some ordinary hotel in a place I didn't know about. This hotel was easy for me to get to because it was right next to the big road I was on. For a very long time, I was on this road and hardly saw any other cars. It felt like I was the only one there. But after a while, I noticed another car's lights in my mirrors. This car was following me from far back. As I drove for the next few hours, I kept seeing those same lights in my mirror. The car was still following me, even though the road was really big and empty. When I finally got to the turn for the hotel, I went in and stopped my car in the parking area. Guess what? That same car that was following me also came in and stopped not too far from me. It felt very strange. Why would someone follow me for hours and then stop at the same hotel? But I tried not to think too much about it. Maybe they just needed a place to stay too. The hotel didn't look great from the outside. It was pretty old and wasn't very big. And the strange thing was, there weren't any other buildings around. I thought there would be other shops or homes, but there weren't. I took my things and went inside to get my room. The lady at the front gave me a plastic card to open my room door. Even though the hotel looked old, I was a bit surprised they had these modern door openers. My room was at the end of a corridor on the ground floor. I had to try a few times with the card before the door finally opened. The room was small and had an old style, but it was clean, so I was happy. I began to take out the things I needed for my night's stay when suddenly I heard someone knocking on my door. Curiously, I looked through the small hole in the door to see who it was. There was a man standing there. I didn't recognize him and he didn't seem to work for the hotel. I felt uneasy, especially thinking about how I was in an isolated hotel and that car had followed me. So I decided it was best not to open the door. After all, if it was something important, he would knock again, right? But he didn't. After I got everything ready for the night, I took a quick shower. Then I got into bed feeling tired. I started watching a movie on the TV, one of those free ones they offer. I was so tired that I drifted to sleep probably around midnight. When I woke up, it was pitch black in my room. I felt so sleepy, like I hadn't rested at all. There was this annoying beep sound that I kept hearing. It was like a distant noise that slowly grew louder in my ears. I was confused, not really awake yet. Then suddenly I realized what that sound was. My heart started racing and I shot up in bed. That beeping noise was the sound of someone trying to use a card to open my door. I jumped out of bed quickly and turned on the nearby light. The beeping stopped right away and I could hear someone running fast outside my room. I went to the door and opened it, looking to see who it was, but they were already gone. I just missed them. Just then, the lady who had given me my room card earlier appeared in the hallway. She looked worried and asked me if I was okay. I asked her if she saw the person running and she said yes. She told me she saw a man dash out to the parking lot. I peeked out and saw a man getting into a car. It looked a lot like the car that had followed me earlier. He quickly drove away, making a loud noise with his tires. It was like he was in a big hurry or maybe he was scared. The lady told me that the man came into the hotel not long before and just walked right to my part of the building. She thought he had a room but then she saw him run away so fast. I shared with her that I had heard someone trying to use a card on my door. The weird part was that my door card wasn't so easy to use, so I was scared thinking, did he have a card that could open my door? The police came, but they didn't do much. They never found that man. Later, I looked things up on my own. I found out that there are fake cards that can open some hotel doors. That scared me even more. I still don't understand why that man was there or what he wanted, but now I think I'll avoid staying at hotels for a while.
I have a job at a small hotel in our town that's owned by a local family. Even though it doesn't look as fancy as the bigger chain hotels, we do okay business-wise. The reason is simple. Our town doesn't have a lot of hotel choices. So folks who visit don't have too many places to choose from. In the hot summer months and the chilly winter ones, we get quite a few guests. But when it's spring or fall, business can get slow. Sometimes we get only a few guests, or even none. So, it was one of those slow spring nights. I was doing my usual night shift, from 6 in the evening to 2 in the morning. It was around 11 p.m. when the front door opened, and in walked a guy pulling a big suitcase behind him. This guy, let's call him Bob, seemed pretty ordinary. He was polite and talked softly, but he looked super worn out, as if he'd traveled a long distance or hadn't slept well. Bob wanted a room for just one night, and if possible, he wanted the room at the very end on the ground floor. Since it was a quiet night and not many rooms were occupied, I thought, why not? And gave him the room he wanted. Bob thanked me with a nod, wheeled his suitcase down the corridor, and disappeared from sight. I got back to tidying up the front desk and sorting out some paperwork. Not long after, another man entered. Let's call him Mike. Mike looked just as exhausted as Bob, but his mood was way different. Unlike Bob's polite manner, Mike seemed a bit on edge. He didn't have any bags with him. He straight up said he wanted the room next to Bob's. He mentioned they were travel buddies. Normally, friends or families who want rooms next to each other come in together, so this was a little odd. But thinking back to how I'd already fulfilled Bob's request, I felt it was only right to give Mike what he wanted, too. Besides, I didn't think he had any reason to be dishonest, and I couldn't see any harm in it. So I handed Mike the key to the room next to Bob's, and off he went. Once the two of them were settled, I took a break. I settled into a comfy chair, pulled out the sandwich I had packed for dinner, and started looking through some interesting stuff on my phone. About an hour later, the phone at the front desk started to ring. I got up from my chair and picked it up, seeing the call was from one of the hotel rooms. Hello, I answered, but right after I spoke, the call was cut off. It was weird. I didn't hear any voice on the other end, just some rustling noise. I thought maybe the person had dialed by mistake or changed their mind about asking for something. I looked at the phone to see which room had called. It was the room where the polite guy, Bob, was staying. A few moments went by, and then there was this loud bang. It was so loud that it echoed down the hallways of the hotel. Curious, I walked out from behind the counter and looked down the hall, but I didn't see anyone. Whatever made that noise had to be big, like something heavy had fallen. A bit worried, I went back to the phone and tried calling Bob's room. The phone rang for a bit, but then the call was abruptly cut off again. I was starting to get a little uneasy. I kept looking down the hallway, hoping maybe Bob would come out to explain or let me know if something was wrong. But there was just silence. I figured if something really bad had happened, he or someone would come to tell me. So, I just waited. About half an hour later, I heard footsteps. Looking up, I saw the other guy, Mike, walking towards me. He looked a bit rushed and said he needed to check out early. I quickly did the checkout process for him, and he left the hotel in a hurry. That night, as I went home, I felt weird. I couldn't quite place the feeling, but something just felt off. It wasn't until a few days later that I found out what happened. Bob never checked out of the hotel. When the cleaning staff went to check his room, they found all his stuff still there, but no sign of Bob. We tried to get a hold of Mike, but the information he'd given us was fake. We couldn't find any record of him anywhere. I couldn't help but think that Mike had something to do with Bob's disappearance. But how? And why? Time passed, but no new information came up. I still work at the hotel, and sometimes I think about that night. Both men are still missing, and the mystery remains unsolved. A month ago, I decided to move to a new place far away. 
It was a long drive, so one night I needed a place to sleep. I didn't know where I was going to stay. I just kept driving till I got too tired. Finally, I saw a sign for a motel. I thought, perfect, this will work for a night. The motel was located in a big forest and was next to the highway. It looked old and kind of broken, like it had seen better days. The parking area had no cars, which I found odd. I wondered how the person working inside had even come to work. But I needed a room, so I didn't think too much about it. I went to the front and got a key. I went to my room and saw that it wasn't very clean. It didn't look like a place you'd want to stay for long. I thought about taking a bath, but when I saw the dirty bathtub, I changed my mind. I was really tired, so I decided to go to sleep. But as I was getting ready to sleep, I heard a weird sound outside. It sounded like someone was playing with door handles. They seemed to be checking each room door, one after another. Soon, the sound came to my door. I got scared. I waited and listened. They tried my door handle, waited for a bit, then moved to the next room. I was really puzzled. Why would someone do that? I thought. Are they trying to get into a room without paying? I tried to sleep again, but then there was a loud noise on my door, like someone was hitting it with their hand. I was scared, but also a bit mad. I got up to check. There was no peephole to see outside, so I used the little chain thing on the door to open it just a bit. Outside, there was a man. He looked to be in his middle ages. He had hair that touched his shoulders and a thick beard. He didn't look happy. I asked him, why are you making so much noise? The man stared at me with a cold face and said, did you pay to stay in this room? I was confused and replied, yes, I did. Why? The man seemed to not believe me. He insisted that the room was his. He said, you have to come with me to the front desk. They told me this room is mine. I found this really weird. The parking lot was empty. So how could both of us get the same room in such a short time? And if they gave him the same room, wouldn't they give him another key? The man, getting impatient, said loudly, Come out now! But I had made up my mind. I wasn't going to leave my room. As I tried to close my door, he pushed against it. Suddenly, another man appeared from the corner. He had a tool in his hand that he tried to use on my door's lock. I got really scared and pushed the door with all my might. During our push and pull, the second man dropped his tool. They both looked at it, and that's when I used all my strength to shut the door quickly. I could hear them hitting the door a few more times, but then, to my relief, I heard their footsteps moving away. I was so scared that I immediately called the police. When the police arrived, the two men were gone, but the most mysterious part was that they didn't have a car. The police found footprints that led into the forest behind the motel. The footprints just disappeared among the trees and ground. I kept wondering why they tried to get into my room when all the other rooms were empty. I hoped they just wanted to steal my stuff, but deep inside I felt it might have been something worse. I'm just thankful I didn't have to find out.